And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Saturday. Welcome to a retro stream. I should turn this 8 bit, really, shouldn't I? <laughs> that would be really cool. I don't think I could do that. I need a plug in or something to make it do that. That, that would be that would be quite, that would be fun. Maybe I could do that. Um, anyway, never mind. Right, we continue on with our um, ZX Spectrum playthrough of the original Elite. So um, uh, we'll see how that goes. We're going to be bad guys today, right? <laughs> That's going to be fun. Um, so um, yeah, so a bit of a recap. I should I should get actually let me let me load things up right. So let's go and get that done. Close down that window. Um, I updated the start screen. I realised I hadn't put um, a little acknowledgement of the music right. No, I a badge. Yeah, I'm still I'm. It's in the attic, and the attic is a place of great wonder <laughs> and hard to find things. So yeah, I know where it is. Well, I know which box it's in. Um, <laughs> but I'm not precisely sure of the coordinates of the box. Um, so, and yeah, the attic is on the list of things to do, right? But anyway, we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I know I, I need to get this badge sorted. Um, but yeah, I had to update the starting screen, okay? Uh, because um, I hadn't credited, uh, I have on my normal start screen, you can just sit here, my, if I just quickly do it like start screen, right? Down the bottom, bottom corner there. Um, is is an acknowledgement of the um, of the uh, the person who, who's 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 done the music. Now, um, Kevin McLeod is um, a composer, a very good composer actually, who um, puts all sorts of music online. And as long as you credit him, he's completely good with you using it for all sorts of things like Twitch streaming and YouTube videos. Um, all the answers you credit him, right? So he's he's a good he's a good bloke. Um, and his music's great, right? So I use it for audiobooks and all sorts of stuff. And as long as you credit him, it's good. So I was just conscious I hadn't credited him on my ZX Spectrum stream. Um, so so anyway, so that's a that's a little thing that I did. So um, credit credit where credit's due, right? It's always good to do that, especially when people are giving things away for free like that. So that's uh, he's a good bloke, Kevin McLeod. Go and check his music out. His website is, is the oddly named incompitech.com. <laughs> Um, so um, so we, we did that. Um, using the Elite 2 music. No, you can't use the Elite 2 music on Elite. That's wrong. Okay, Elite 2 hasn't come out yet. This is 1985. <laughs> yeah, that's that's way in the future. That's eight that's eight years down the ride. Yeah, we can't we can't use that. Um, yeah, the, the ZX Spectrum doesn't have the ability to do any kind of music, anything like that. So we know no, 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 that's that's the future. That's the 90s. We can't do that. <laughs> Anyway, lovely to see so many of on the on the on the chat. So uh, fantastic, right? Uh, with no further ado, let's get on. Uh, right. So where where they where they got to? So a little bit of a recap. We've been playing the original ZX Spectrum version of Elite. This is from 1985. I'm getting my dates right. The original Elite came out in 1984, but it took a year for it to be ported um, to. Um, to the ZX Spectrum, right? So we had to wait a year. So I was 14 when this came out um, and started playing it. So that's when I got my, my first taste of Elite at the age of 14. Um, and um, yeah, so <laughs> we need the whiny startup. We did do that. I don't know if you've caught my original original stream. I didn't want to subject it to you every week. I thought that'd be a bit mean. <laughs> but if you watch the original uh, stream, which is on YouTube, um, you can uh, experience the the entire loading screen of Elite, <laughs> which is about five minutes of <laughs> which is <laughs> just horrible. <laughs> but I did the whole thing. The whole sequence is there from the load ditto ditto, um, you know, program Elite, data Elite, and then the screen loads, and then it just sort of sits there, right? Okay, so yeah, it's all there. Uh, but I just didn't think I would want to subject that to you. You know, subject you to it every week. I thought that'd be a bit unfair. Um, so, um, uh, a little bit about this save game, because this is a save game, okay? We can save the game. It's a single player game. So, for those of you not familiar with the original, it obviously wasn't multiplayer. There was no internet back in those days. Uh, multiplayer games in those days, you had to actually bring your computer to your mate's house and plug it in with a cable, right? To get the two computers to talk to each other or two tellies. That was the only way we had to do multiplayer um, in those days. And Elite didn't support that anyway, so, okay. Um, it was, um, uh, you know, it was a single player game. So you can save your position as you go through. We've been doing that. Now we are about six hours of playtime into the game now. Um, and we've got a pretty decent ship. Okay, you can see our equipment there. We have a large cargo bay. So uh, we have a Cobra Mark III spaceship. Uh, it's the only spaceship we can fly in the original game. You can't change ships, okay? Um, we have uh, a large cargo bay which expands the capacity from 20 tons to 35 tons. That's the only option you have, right? 
So we can carry 35 tonnes of cargo. We've got fuel scoops, which means we can suck up um, fuel from the star, refuel on the way around, and we can scoop up um, objects in space, right? Um, the ECM system allows us to you know, effectively be invulnerable to missiles. Uh, the energy unit gives us a boost on how quickly our shields and uh, energy units recharge. Docking computers allow us to get into the space station nice and fast. Front military laser means we can go on the offensive, okay? And we could, we actually defeated some Thargoids at the end of last week, so that's a little technique that we do. And we stuck a mining laser on the back of the ship um, in order to just give us the option to go mining when we want to. Probably won't use it, but um, uh, there we go. Now, um, the aim of this Twitch stream is to trigger the ZX Spectrum missions. Now, I've been doing a bit of research this week onto what the missions actually are. It's still not entirely clear. I can't get a, I can't get a definitive on this. Um, I personally have only experienced the supernova mission um, myself. Okay, um, so that one is definitely there. Um, I have seen my friends get the cloaking device for the Spectrum version. So there's a cloaking device in the game. Uh, which is a mission as well, but I don't know exactly how you get the mission. Um, so that's that's something to find out. And there's definitely a Thargoid mission or two. It's not entirely clear whether there's one or two Thargoid missions uh, in, in the Spectrum version. So there may only be three missions that we need to kind of think. But what I want to do is I want to see if I can trigger them, capture them for posterity, right? Because I've searched YouTube, I've searched everywhere. No one appears to have captured the ZX Spectrum missions on screen. So... Um, I want to do that, okay? That's, that's that's my objective. Now, I believe the first ZX Spectrum mission is triggered um, by being at least competent, okay, on the ratings of, you know, the, the rating. You can see we're above average right now. Um, so I've got to get to competent, and I believe I've got to have a galactic hyperspace fitted to my ship. So that's something we don't have right now, so that's going to be a little bit of a quest for today, so see if we can get that. So um, in order to get the ratings up, okay, <laughs> And the only way you get a rating in this original game is to kill stuff, right? So we're going to be bad guys today. We're just going to slaughter our way through every NPC that comes in. And, and, and hopefully we're going to go and see some, um, see some different types of ships. So I'm just going to go mad today, right? We're going to go bad, okay? We're going to be bad guys. We're just going to slaughter our way through and make as much profit from ill-gotten gains as we can, okay? So we're going... <laughs> up to now, we've been clean most of the time. Uh, we we were we were an offender at one point, but we're going to end up fugitive, and it's going to, it's going to be mayhem. But our ship can cope with it right now. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to tr uh, well, that's interesting actually. Camel number one, you can trigger the supernova mission by saving the game immediately on the initial load. Okay, well, um, let me know how that works. I I kind of want to do it properly, but I wouldn't I wouldn't mind doing that offline actually, just sort of. Um, checking that so does you know for that anyway so anyway um hello to everybody in the chat that i haven't spoken to um yet turbo turbo j22 227 sam cams thank you very much camel number camel number one jules falcon nine clan that's a good name <laughs> commander Kelvinator, dr introvertius commander sinclair now there's a good name i do like that one winnie 1974 good to see you kelly baglass here um so um so yeah competent and maybe in galaxy 2 is something that we have to do <laughs> Shoot the space station and murder the Rosas, yes. <laughs> so camel number one, yeah, do let me know how to trigger that from a standing start, because that would be interesting too. But um, Commander Sinclair's text message on my mobile is the first few seconds of the Spectrum Elite Loader. Now that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Grey beard, 41. Hello as well. So good to see you all on the stream. Right, so let's let's get going. Now we're going to go, we're just going to go off murdering, right? Um, so where should we go? <laughs> Should we go? We were in Qteria and Eisenhower to get some extra money. So let's just find a place where there's going to be a decent number. Multi-government. Okay, so that's going to be a bit of a mess. Um, right, let's, and we've got, I don't think we've got anything in the hold. So we'll just, just scoop up anything we find and go kill stuff, right? That's, that's the plan for today. <laughs> um, and let's just see what we encounter, right? So there we go. Uh, right, so hyperspace ho. I was actually using this version of the game actually on my uh, Elite Law Tour on Thursday just to sort of show how hyperspace tech has changed, right? Because interesting enough, the hyperspace tech in the original 8 bit games is, uh, law wise, is faster. He's going to send me via Twitter technical. Yeah, okay, I'll be really interested in seeing that. Um, so actually, let's head for the star and refuel because it's always nice to have a full tank of fuel because we may not want to go near the space station if we're fugitive, right? Um, 
<laughs> so let's let's do that. Hit the jump drive and see what turns up. And of course, oh, there we go. Pirate is the first thing we're encountering, uh, which is odd, odd actually, because we haven't actually got anything in the hole worth stealing at the moment. So he's obviously just decided to attack us for no good reason. It looks like a cobra. So that's just going to be an easy kill. With our military laser, boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take that. That's nice and easy. Now, he's dropped some cargo, right? So this is this is the other get rich quick scheme in the original game: is you just murder things, and then you pick up anything they drop, right? Um, so I'm just going to make sure I don't smash into this cargo canister. And what have we got? We got some computers. Nice. Uh, do I uh, plan to cover Frontier Elite Two? Well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of hand things like that over to. Uh, the stream a little bit actually because there's lots of things we could do right I'm quite keen to do some 16-bit stuff and obviously Elite 2 is in that kind of era um, so yeah that, that would be fun that's on the list um, I'm quite keen also potentially to do let's let's review some of the um, 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 you know some of the other versions of it now this is the other problem I can't find the star now <laughs> <laughs> All I know is I'm pointing away from. There's no way to effectively track it on the 8-bit version. There it is. There, there, right. So it's on the right view. So 90 degree. Oh, there's a ship. Right. Well, we're going to go on the murder now. Okay. This is a trader that's just turned up, uh, and that looks like a python, I would guess. So we're going to just attack because we're bad guys, right? Boom. <laughs> Life is quite easy with a military laser, right? So we should now, right, I'm just going to slow down, pinch that cargo, but we should now be fugitive because uh, I've just murdered a ship full of people. Um, radioactive, so that, they were carrying some stuff. Right, so let's just check our status. Oh, I've got, that's what we've got in the tons. So where's my, where's my, there we are. I'm now fugitive, okay? No, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> we're the bad guys now, right? So I've just murdered the ship, right? Okay, and just stolen this cargo. So I am now a pirate as far as the game is concerned. Um... So, um, but yeah, I'm just on that. So, I, I, in some ways, I'm quite keen to maybe um, cover some of the early 8-bit versions of the game. Just sort of just do some playthroughs of stuff like that. Not not quite the same detail as we're doing here, but maybe just do a review. Maybe take a make a make a, take a stream to review the, um, uh, let's say, the Commodore 64 version of of Elite, right, or the um, um, the BBC version, and just see how far I can get in a playthrough of those sort of games. Um, that's just an asteroid. Um, right, so there we go. Let's just get the fuel scoops on. And a bit of luck. There we go. Fuel scoops are on. Right. I've learned the technique. You know, you don't have to thrust. You just sort of sit here, right? And wait for your fuel tanks to fill up, which is which is cool. Um, and you can see the fuel indicator is now slowly rising, which it means I am now completely independent. I don't need to go near the space stations, right? Um, uh, until until I you know, until my hold is full of ill-gotten gains. <laughs> my role playing is Harry Potter, kind of, I suppose. Yes, <laughs> I'm given over to the dark side. Um, so, um, but yeah, so eight-bit versions, um, Commodore sixty-four. I'd like to just try some. Uh, I've never ever played the Commodore sixty-four version of Elite, for example. I'd need to get an emulator. Um, I've got the BBC one that Frontier gave out a little while ago. I've definitely got that working, and you know we could play the Elite, the original Elite on the BBC for a bit. Just try that. But the sixty-bit era also interests me, right? So I think it might be fun to to try some things. Oh, we got pirate. Um, which now this is I got killed last week. I've got to be a bit careful of this because. Um, I'm quite close to the star, right? And if I jump about too much, then I will uh, I will die. So let's um, let's accelerate away from the star to give us a bit of breathing room. Um, <laughs> looks like a Cobra sees. Yeah, Quasar Twenty Two. You after playing the game for a while, and I played this a lot, right, as a kid. Um, a lot. I mean, we're talking. <laughs> A lot, okay. Several, several, probably hundreds and hundreds of hours. So um, I know which ship is which just by the the, the sort of pit, the size of the pixels that appear. Oh, that was close. Um, what's that? All right, let's see if my that looks like an asp. Oh no, what's that? Um, yeah, it is an asp. There we go. It is an asp. It's not gonna last. Right, that one. 
That one just leaves alloys, which aren't all that interesting, so I'm not actually going to waste my... Uh, oh, one of them hit my shield. Uh, I'm not going to waste my few, my uh, um, cargo space with just alloys. Alloys alloys are a bit boring, right? Um, so, so anyway, for those of you who've not seen this before, there, there may be a few of you on stream. So this is the original Elite, um, as it was on the ZX Spectrum, which is a... Uh, a computer of the era. This is about circa 1985, right? So we've got a single dot there, right? Then we get that's definitely an ASP, okay? Um, but we've been playing for six hours and we've got a half decent ship. And you can see the, the lasers that I've got on my ship are potent enough. Incoming missile at you. Boom. Um, are potent enough to deal with most of the uh, bad guys out there now. And we're, we're not getting, at the moment, too much in the way of the game ramping up its difficulty. Um, it's quite easy for me to cope with. That was an asteroid, by the way. Here's it now. Okay, here's another innocent ship, right? Um, this is a python. Um, so I'm going to take that out. <laughs> Just murdering my way through the space lanes at the moment. <laughs> because this military laser that I've got is, is actually quite devastating. <laughs> As you can see, um, the other ships don't really stand a chance once they're in um, so in, in my in my crosshairs. So I'm now developing a reputation as a fearsome pirate of the space lanes. I think uh, so. I'm just literally flying around, getting the NPCs to spawn, and and killing them. <laughs> uh, looks like a another python there. I would guess. Engage. Oh no, I shot the cargo. <laughs> That's just unlucky. <laughs> Urgh. Never mind. Oh, there's another one, right. So we're just murdering our way through the space lanes here. So basically, as you're flying out, I mean, these 8-bit games are obviously pretty primitive, right? So basically, on the Spectrum version, if a ship spawns in front of you, you get to realise that it is, in fact, always going to be an innocent ship. And you're, you know, the pirates always spawn from the sides. They try and ambush you, basically get the tactical advantage over you. Uh, narcotics! Oh, now I'm a drug smuggler. <laughs> uh, right, now we go. This is, this, is, this is an ambush, okay? So the pirates have appeared on either side of me. Uh, so I've got to deal with one. Now the trick here is to make sure you keep your thrusters at full speed um, in order to keep a distance so you don't have both ships firing at you at the same time. I don't know what this ship is yet. I'm going to lock a missile on target. And uh, that is... That's an asp again, I think. No, that was a sidewinder. Easy kill. Um, yeah, I haven't got a joystick that... Well, I have got a joystick. I've got my HOTAS, but I don't... I always played it on keyboard, you see. So I'm actually more familiar with playing the Spectrum on a keyboard than I am actually with a joystick. So uh, my muscle memory kind of... Uh, right, that is a crate. Okay, I'm gonna. We haven't seen one of these before, so I'm gonna fly up a little bit close. That's the that's the crate from the original game. You can see the design of the ship. Um, I can keep up with it. You know, it's uh, there. We go. It's actually upside down there. No, there, there. You can see the cockpit, right, and the engines uh, at the back. So you can see the ship is yeah reminiscent of the one that we have in Elite Dangerous, right? Um, it's not a particularly tough ship in Elite, um, although it's dodging around quite well. Ooh, it's pulling back on me. Oh, there we go. It'll pull out this time. That's a mistake. There goes an escape pod. Right, now here's here's another moral ambiguity, right? Is I can scoop up the cargo here. Which I'm going to do. I'm going to pinch his cargo. Now, notice he dropped something else there, and that was an escape pod. Okay? Now, I can leave the escape pod, and what it will do, it will just float around space pretty much. Um, but the idea is it, it, it's supposed to take the occupant back home, right? But you can scoop it up and turn it into slaves and sell them as well. So that's that's jolly illegal as well. So I'm clearly a very, very bad guy, right? Um, and the trick is what you do on this at this point in the game, because you're pursuing ranking, right? Is you just keep flying around murdering stuff um, uh, until you, you get your ranking. Oh, this one's attacking me as well, what's this? Uh, that is an asp, but one-on-one, -on -one, none of these ships are basically a match for you anymore with the military laser and the energy unit. Uh, you can't... You, oop, you tried. That was, that's the ECM, by the way. Um, 
and I'm getting a fair bit of money now. Right, I'm in system space. Now, if I approach the space station now, notice I'm a fugitive, right? If I approach the space station now, then all the vipers will come out and try and kill me. So that, that'd be a bit of a laugh, right? <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Um, um, I'm going to have to approach it manually because I don't think the docking computer will work for me. It may do. Um, if the docking computer doesn't work, it means that I am badly fugitive. I'm going to press it and see what happens. Oh, it does. Okay, it's let me in. So obviously, um, the the, um, the police are a little bit odd in in elite in the sense that sometimes they kind of turn a blind eye <laughs> as they have today, um, and um, sometimes they don't. Right. <laughs> so today, you know, murdering people that's fine. Don't worry about it. We all we all have bad days, right? <laughs> um, so, um, but there we go. So anyway, let's 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 go onwards in our murdering spree and go somewhere else. That's a confederacy. We kind of want a dangerous place. Now I know we're oh, feudal. Okay, right. So that's quite a good. This is gonna this is gonna be a bit more. This is the second da most dangerous type of system you can go to. Feudal is one step above anarchy. So let's go there and see what that looks like. What I might do is I might um, actually let me just save progress because we are. There we go. Quick save. Uh, we are um, trying to move forward, right? Let's go to let's go to the um, let's go to the, now. The the lower level systems are actually quite dangerous. You can spend 20, 30 minutes fighting your way around the system, right? So again, I'm going to head for the star to refuel, which is always quite a good thing to do. Um, and let's see, we'll see what the game throws at us in a feudal system. Uh, right, innocent ship. Well, that's a start. He's dead. I can't see him. He's hiding in the sun, which is quite a good tactic, actually. But uh, let's just nose down a bit. There he is. What have we got here? That looks like a python. Can't actually see. It. Yes, that's a python. Right. Got phasers on target. Open fire. Boom! Just sat there and took it. Ah <laughs> uh, dear. So the military laser is. Oh, the liquor and wines. Nice. Um, so only one ship you can fly. Yes. So in the original game, you only have the Cobra. All right. This is now this one here. Um, notice he appeared in front of me, but he's attacking me. This means this guy is a bounty hunter, and he may be flying. What's he flying? It's now it's a police. Okay, that is a viper. So this is actually the police attacking me. So now I'm about to kill the cops. So the police will spawn sometimes, and if you're fugitive. Um, they will they will attack you. So I've just killed the police ship. <laughs> it's probably bad now. Um, so yeah, in the original game, only a single ship. You can upgrade it, but you are you only have the Cobra Mark III, which is why the Cobra Mark III is is one of the most iconic ships in the game, right? Because it was the only only one you could have at the start. And you can see with a military laser. Um, uh, <laughs> Pretty damn effective, right? In this version of the game, um, so I'm surprised that, and that's the interesting. That's the first time we've seen a viper, right? Um, in this game, uh, attackers, obviously because we're fugitive at the moment. In in a, an, in a feudal system, why is a cop, a single viper, flying around in a feudal system, right? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, right, what we got here? Yeah, I think this is a Cobra Mark III. Oh no, no, this is this is this is a Ferdilance, I think. Is it? Or is it? No, it's Cobra Mark III. Which is dead. There we go. We haven't seen a third lance on the attack yet. We probably haven't quite got the notoriety for it. The third lance is a nasty ship in the, in the original League. Um, because. Um, oh, they're attacking me as well. Um, because it usually is packing a beam laser. What have we got here? That's not a Viper, I think. Yeah, it's coming in fast. It's a Viper. So, so in 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 the original Elite, Vipers are exclusively um, police ships. Okay, they are known to be um, the police. So, I'm now guilty of killing the cops twice. Oops! Oh, that was interesting. I've not seen that happen before. I lost my radioactives. Oh, mean! Oh, another ship. <laughs> I'm getting more trouble with the cops than I am with the actual. NPCs. I don't even know what that is. It's quite small. Oh, this is a, this is a third lance. There we go. 
we now got notoriety. So the third lances are exclusively bounty hunters in the original game, right? Um, so he is he's out to collect the bounty on me. Um, which which is quite nice, right? See, the game is detecting what I'm doing. It realized it's now realized I've gone bad. So it sent the police out after me, and then once I've got notoriety with the police, it can then spawn bounty hunters against me. You know, because I've got somebody else now hanging around on the edge of the screen, uh, waiting for me to make a mistake. And these um, third lances are actually quite hard to kill because they. They've got some of the best AI in the game. They will dodge and they will weave, and some of them spawn with beam lasers, so they're actually quite dangerous opponents. Oh, he's dodged. I need. Oh. <laughs> that was a good move. He tried to launch a missile at point blank range, which is another trick that they use, um, so you can't hit your ECM fast enough. Oh, I shot his missile down. Nice shot by me there. So this guy's giving me a bit of a hard time. But I've got him. That was a mistake. There we go. And there's another ship now coming in from the side, so taking advantage of the fact that I'm weak. Um, and that is an asp. There's another ship spawn there. So the game is scaling up the difficulty, right? And this is what made the original Elite so compelling, right? So there's always something going on. Oh, you little cheeky monkey. <laughs> so I know that trick. I know they like to spawn um, missiles at point blank range. So my finger is poised over the ECM button, <laughs> waiting for them to try that tactic. Right, there we go. I think what we got there is that just a piece of hull, or is that a bit of? That's an escape pod. Let's scoop up him and then sell him on the black market. There we go. Right, so you can see the screen's got all sorts of stuff on it. So that looks like a bit of debris. Let's just slow down a bit while we turn around. What have we got here? That looks like debris. That's debris, so that one up there must be something else. Oh, there's another ship. Look, see, it's, there's all sorts of stuff going on. Um, let's fly towards this. is probably another ship. Uh, not sure which ship it is. Um, so, um, so yeah, I'm just catching up with the chat. Ships are Mark Three, the Mark One, the Mark Two never existed. Well, the Mark One never existed in the game, but it did exist in the lore. The Mark II Cobra never existed in the game either, but it was mentioned in the lore as a failed prototype. Okay, so there was a Cobra Mark II that had a design flaw, uh, never made it past the prototype stage. One of those is a ship. Um, so it is mentioned in the lore, but uh, they don't exist. And the Cobra Mark One, I, I believe I'm correct, does appear in um, Elite Two and Elite Three, right? Um, I think I'm correct in saying. Um, somebody will correct me if I'm not. Right, there's another pirate vessel just appeared. Let's deal with him. Full speed. Um, so, um, a modern version called Elite A allowed you to change ships. I haven't played that. So, we should talk a little bit about those at some point because there are some Russian um, versions of Elite that continued on and were enhanced quite dramatically from the original one using the later ZX Spectrum 128K version. Um, so the Cobra in, the Crash Jameson Cobra in, um, uh, we need to dig into this a little bit more because um, I'm not at this point in time sure if the Cobra there is a Cobra of this era from the original Elite or whether it's one from Frontier First, in, uh, first Encounters um, I'm assuming it's one from Frontier First Encounters, so it's it's an older Cobra Mark III, but not as old as the ones we're flying in this game, I think. But I'm not entirely sure. Um, the yeah, it should look more blocky. Oh, that's just a piece of debris. So why is my anyway? What's the head for the star? So I need to dig into that a little bit more, right? Is that the yeah? So it should be a little bit blocky because it's not a current Cobra, but it's a I think it's a Cobra vintage from. Um, the year sort of 3200 rather than um, 3250. Um, but I need to dig into that a little bit more. I haven't done that bit of research for the law tour yet. Um, Jameson's, oh, Malik says, Jameson Cobra Mark III is Mark III written on the hull. Okay, so. Um, I need to dig into that a little bit. So, you know, Jameson, uh, Jameson is the name of the commander. Um, of of this era, right? Okay, so if you look at there, you'll notice I'm Commander Jameson. That's the default save name, right? 
for an elite commander. Okay, so this is this is the Cobra. Now the Cobra Mark III was already an old ship at this point in the game. We've calculated based on the law that this original 8-bit version of the game, the BBC, the Spectrum, Commodore 64, took place law-wise in the year 3125. Okay, so about 175 years before Elite Dangerous. Um, but um, it is. Um, another 75 years on before the later versions of the game, Frontier Elite 2 and Frontier First Encounters. Um, so time has changed. Now, the crashed, um, the logs, from what I recall, of the Jameson Cobra in Elite Dangerous are to do with the um, Thargoid Mycoid virus, right? Oh, shot down the cargo. Um, which dates it to the, the era of 3250. But whether the ship there is an older ship um, because the um, Cobra that you can buy in Elite Dangerous today is made by a company called Falcon de Lacey, right? Um, now they acquired the design for the Cobra from another company called Cowell and McGrath, who in this era of Elite um, own, uh, own and build the Cobra Mark III design, right? So Cowell and McGrath Cobras are you know are arguably vintage cobras right so from this era of era of elite uh, and i can't off the top of my head remember um what, what um at what point cal and mcgrath i think i think they they kind of went bust and they were acquired by falcon de Lacey, right um and um prior to that there was a lot of rivalry between those two organizations but um cal and mcgrath either went bust or got acquired by um um, Falcon de Lacey and um, the design for the Cobra Mark III passed over to them so um, the one that the, like I said the Cobra Mark III you buy today is a Falcon de Lacey model which has been upgraded to the technology of the Elite Dangerous World obviously with the FSD and all that sort of stuff um, the Cobras of the previous era were made by Cal and McGrath and if you've read my book Reclamation you'll notice that the, the Cobra Mark III in that novel is actually a Cal and McGrath Cobra Mark III, not a Falcon de Lacey one. And the owner is justifiably proud that he's got a vintage Mark III Cobra, right? Uh, but the Mark III Cobra has been around for a long time. It predates Elite in the law by quite a long way. Um, so, um, you yeah, know, things have changed. Now, I'm not sure exactly which era the crashed Cobra is from. It's using a different model to the one that we fly. Uh, you can see it's related, obviously. It has a very distinctive shape, but it's not quite the same. But I'm not sure which Jameson that is. Because <laughs> the Jamesons get a bit confused. We are In the law, in this version of the game, right, we're a commander Jameson. Right, now, they, actually, here's a good point. The AI is scaling up. Notice I've got two pirates attacking me in tandem from this angle. So I've just had an attack by three pirates, and it's all sidewinders, which are relatively easy targets, right? Um, but the game is now making the pirates tougher, uh, which is which is good, yeah. But right, now it's now it's super scaling it up. Okay, um, right. I've got two pirates closing from two angles. So this is now the game going. Well, ha, right. Let's see if you can handle this. <laughs> so this is now four on one. Okay. So this is more of a challenge, right? Um, so I'll get back to the law in a minute. I need to, go, <laughs> I need to concentrate for a moment, right? Uh, I've got... What have I got up there? I don't know what that was. Oh, that's a crate. Let's deal with that. Oh, that wasn't good shooting. I've got to... Oh, I've overheated my laser. Got him. Right. Quickly scoop his cargo. Because I'm a boss. Narcotics. Nice. Right. Now I've got all other three ships on me, which is not ideal. There's a sidewinder. I'm going to get the sidewinder first because the sidewinder is actually annoying because it's fast and manoeuvrable and small, but it's quite an easy kill. Right, my shields are down. Missile. Got the ECM. Got it. Right, so two ships left to go. Let's dodge. Turning circle is slightly sharper if you reduce thrust, so that's a good call. <sighs> that was close. Guy almost hit me. What have I got here? Shields are coming back up, that's always good. Don't know what that is yet. That's another sidewinder. He's dead. Right, what's the last ship? So there we are. Victory. Um, victory against 
a four on pirate attack. They're all sidewinders. Okay, so the game is the game is slowly scaling up, right? So four on one attack by a, a set of sidewinders. There, it will throw worse stuff at me as I get more. Um, um, yeah, <laughs> the ECM is so divisive it slows down the entire galaxy. That's right. As you fire it off, the computer has to <laughs> do the sound and the graphics at the same time, and it slows everything down. All right, so let's just keep murdering our way through the universe. Right, oh, there's more pirates there. I'll stop for a minute, and we can just settle this law. So, yeah, so the Cobra thing, um, where Commander Jameson in this universe, right? I, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm going to need to reread it, but um, the FE2 manual, the second elite manual, talks about you being the grandson of the original um, commander, right? So, and I need to go and look at the uh, Frontier Elite 3, Sorry, first encounters. Naming convention is confusing. Right. So let me. All right. Let me stop a moment because I'm <laughs> flying and trying to explain things is really hard. Um, I'm going to stop. Um, so elite. The original elite takes place in 3125. Commander Jameson. Right. Commander Jameson has kids, and then they have grandchildren. Right. So in the second game, which is set in the year 3200, you get in the manual it says, "Congratulations, your grandfather has given you a ship. Right, which is an eagle." and 100 credits to get going. So that's how the second game starts. So you are the grandchild in that game of your previous self. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird, but that's how it works. Now, I can't remember how the third, off the top of my head, I'm gonna have to look this up, how the third game starts, which is 50 years later again, right? So the Commander Jameson there, depending on what it says, might be the great grandchild of the original elite pilot. But I'm gonna have to go and check. And I don't know whether the Commander Jameson crash site is is the great grandchild of this this elite commander who we are today. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to dig that out. It's something like that. But Commander Jameson, the Jamesons, right, are a, a a famous line of commanders in the elite law. Okay, that's basically how it is. So um, that that needs a little bit of investigation. Oh, a, a pirate python. That's unusual. Um, it's gonna die anyway. Pythons are easy to hit. They've got the strongest shields in the game, as you can see, but um, he's decided to run for it. He's not going to get away. Oh, I've overheated my guns. Got him. There we go. And, um, yes, yeah, so let's just see how we're doing here, shall we? Uh, narcotics, naughty boys. Right, so we're now above average still, fugitive, we've got a bit more money, um, but we, we our cargo hold is filling up nicely, right? So there we go. Um, there we are, Kelvinator. Okay, the prefest from FFE, so prefest to Jameson Jr. Um, so I'll get down. To whom are concerned? Uh, death of your gra grandfather, Commander Peter Jameson. The wreckage of a ship was found in the Red Crack System 3199. Uh, okay, so that sounds like the same um, as the, other than the um, location, that sounds the same as the um, Frontier Elite 2 intro, uh, which exactly that, that same company of solicitors, Messrs. Sue, Cripple and Sneer, which, <laughs> which is great. Um, but it starts you obviously in, um, in Merlin, doesn't it? Um, with, a, um, with a ship. Now you stand, you, you um, in Frontier Elite 2, you start with an eagle and 100 credits. So, and then thinking Frontier First Encounters, you start with a Saka Mark III, which is a really weird looking ship uh, with 100 credits, but in a different place. So it looks like Peter Jameson is who we are playing at the moment, okay? Um, and he was found in the Ridquat system on November 11th, 3199, okay? Um, so for some reason, um, because Frontier First Encounters starts in the year 3250, it's taken this company of solicitors 51 years <laughs> to set up <laughs> and figure out what they were going to do uh, which is a bit weird um, so so maybe it's the same so maybe in the second and third game uh, you are the grandson or granddaughter of course of Peter Jameson and we are currently Peter Jameson right so we are we are making the beginning of the elite legend here um, So there we go. So uh, yeah. So um, <laughs> um, as you can see, there was a misunderstanding. 
<laughs> killed in combat after a misunderstanding over some stolen goods. So, which you can see because this is this is the personality I'm now playing. Peter Jameson has gone bad, right? <laughs> um, and and this is why, because uh, I'm I'm murdering my way through the universe. Uh, in a feudal system. I, arguably, I'm tidying up a feudal system here. Ah, now this is interesting. I thought that was an asteroid, but this isn't, right? This is either a rock hermit or an anaconda. And if you shoot up an anaconda, I think we'll be lucky here. Okay, it's going to launch two ships against me. This is quite a nice little thing on the spectrum, right? Is It will launch a crate. Well, it's launched two crates at me, actually. So um, it's, got def it, it's got ship launch fighters, right? Who knew that was a thing back in the olden days? So it's launched two crates at me. I'm going to be a boss again, pick up the cargo before I deal with them, because otherwise the, the cargo tends to run out of range, right? <laughs> um, well, there's another ship appearing. So I've taken on this anaconda here, which look, doesn't, to be fair, doesn't look exactly like an asteroid. Um, it's really hard to tell. The, the only way you can tell is that the anaconda doesn't rotate when you approach it, uh, like the asteroid does. So gonna, oh, damn, it's a new problem. You can't always back off the... Um, keybind for the lasers quick enough to avoid shooting the cargo that you just lost. Anyway, let's get this crate. Um, so I've just murdered an anaconda and its two escort ships. Or at least I will have done. Um, so the, oh no! Shot the cargo down again. Right, now there's a witness here so obviously we've got to kill them. <laughs> well, that's a, that looks like another asteroid. So let's see if it is an asteroid by shooting it. That actually was an asteroid. Uh, oh, and there's a Cobra Mark III, so uh, we're going to have to kill them as well. Oh, and they're attacking us anyway, in self-defense, which is a pretty stupid move. Why would you attack somebody who you've just seen murder an anaconda? <laughs> but anyway, there we go. Right, he's dropped both a cargo canister and his escape pod, which is jolly nice of him, because that's extra cash for me, because I'm a bad guy. So I'm going to scoop that up as well. I'm just... <laughs> So you see how the game goes, right? <laughs> um, yeah, the letter the letter in Frontier First Encounters and, and, and Frontier Elite 2 is great. It's Sue Cripple and Sneer the Solicitors and Edmund Sneer, who's obviously presumably one of the partners or something. That's quite cool. Oh, I think this is another anaconda. Oh, that's not. That's right. All right, there's another pirate. So, all right, how are we doing rating-wise? We're getting anywhere yet. Uh, above average still. I kind of competent is next. I think somebody will tell me is competent the next rank. I do have to kill quite a few ships because it doubles every time, right? Um, so yeah, so we've got quite a catalogue of stuff on ship. That's a cobra. That means uh, a ton of cargo, maybe an escape pod. Incoming missile. Not doing any good. There we go. Just just the cargo. Another ship that's just appeared. Uh, that's unfortunate <laughs> for them. Okay. That's a python. Gonna have to slow down. He's managed to dodge my missile. Uh, now you're being hit. Boom. Amazing special effects, obviously, back in the day. <laughs> Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm launch an attack on the space station, right, because I want to show you that side of thing. This is, this, this is something that happens, right? All right, so there's another poor unfortunate trader caught in my crosshairs. And at this point in the game, they just become a nuisance, right, because they slow you down, because you can't use the jump technology, the Taurus drive, as it's called on the Spectrum version, um, to get close to the planet all the time there's another ship in the way. So he's just thought, launch a couple of missiles at a guy. That'll... Oh, he's launched, he's launched four. Finally. Not good. Oh, shot down his cargo. Never mind. Another pirate. So you can see, I'm so used to this game, I, I, you know, I'm getting a little bit blase about the opponents. It will continue to ramp up, but we're not in the most dangerous systems yet. We'll see if we can find an anarchy on our way. That would, that would be quite interesting. Oh, this one's, this one's firing quite fast. What have we got here? Another asp. He's only got hull plates and things. Oh, probably a viper. Busy. Okay. 
<laughs> the game keeps you. And this is the thing about the original Elite that was good, right? Is that if you went into a system like this, you would spend probably like half, like rather like we have, half an hour fighting for your life. Okay. Let's, let's uh, sell a cop into slavery. That's very, very dodge, right? <laughs> uh, I love the way this game is so morally ambiguous. <laughs> Right, I'm, this time I'm going to fly up to the space station. I'm going to attack it, right? <laughs> it's just a very stupid thing to do. Uh, but I want to show you what happens, right? I will have a hyperspace lock on just in case because it can get out of it can get out of control. Okay, more stuff to pick up. Right, we're almost in space station space, so there we go. Right, I'm not going to hit the docking cubit this time. Let's fly into the space station. So notice we are a fugitive, right? Oh, we're competent! Yes, <laughs> we have, we have, we have the next rating. We're competent now. We're doing quite well. Um, then it's what's what's above competent? It's dangerous, right? Dangerous, deadly, then elite. So we're almost, we're almost dangerous. <laughs> are you above average at the moment? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. <laughs> Um, so, right, so where's the, oh, the station's down there, what's going on? Um, that's a bit weird, right, space station should, I can't even see it yet, so I'm not quite sure where it is. There, there was a small bug on the Spectrum version every so often that the space station would, would kind of cloak itself. <laughs> and I've got a feeling it's done it this time, because there's the planet, right? Um, we're, we're, quite, we're relatively close to it, and the space station's off. Target. And sometimes when you were fugitive, this happened, right? Is that the space station would just not appear. It wouldn't spawn into the game. And it's like they've got, nope, we're putting the cloaking device up. <laughs> we've seen this ship coming. <laughs> and it's not there, right? And if I press C, it won't let me dock, right? My docking computers won't work. Um, and it, it's like the space station isn't there. Uh, and so <laughs> so I, the way I always rationalised this in my head was that they basically, they're, they're, they're scared of me, right? They don't want me at all, so they've turned on a cloaking device for the entire space. No, I'm not getting the space station is not spawning, so I can't, I can't, I can't do anything. So I'm going to have to hyperspace somewhere else. Um, let's let's keep heading upwards. Pontiac is a confederacy, so let's go there. So I can't, I can't spawn at the space station. Um, I'll just make sure I do a quick save at this point because I've got competent, right? That's that's good. Quick save. There we go. Um, and oh, there's a pirate almost straight away because we've got decent cargo, right? So the pirates will want that. I'm going to try and get to the space station so we can do the Viper thing, right? Um, is the cloak space station a bug or feature? I'm not sure. I think it's a bug, but it did happen every so often on the Spectrum version, but only when you became a fugitive, right? So that was um, that was just something, and I, I sort of rationalised it away by the fact that you were such a badass dude that the, the station had kind of either cloaked itself or it had, it had misdirected your, um, your your scanner so that you couldn't find it. <laughs> but I think it's just a bug. I don't remember ever anything being mentioned. Oh, narcotics, nice. Um, anything actually being mentioned in the manual about it, um, that the space station would take it. I mean, obviously the Vipers take a dim view of your activity, but um, so again, we're just gonna murder our way through space here. Um, let's pick up. Well, it looks like he's got an escape pod out. He was he was ready to go. <laughs> got his escape pod. Um, saw me coming. Thought, Quick, escape pod. <laughs> Didn't even get a chance to fire back. Um, right. So there's cargo. Oh, slaves. Oh, no, that's, now this is interesting. This is where the RP. This is where the RNG part of the game is quite interesting. Okay, so he was an innocent trader, right? We picked up his escape pod and got some slaves, but when we picked up his cargo, we also got slaves. <laughs> so he was actually a bit dodgy anyway, um, which is quite funny, right? Um, so he, he was probably an offender. At least he should have been an offender. So I don't know what this is, but we're just gonna blast it anyway. Don't even know what it was. Didn't last long enough to see it. <laughs> so it serves him right. So, um, 
a lot of people playing the original ZX Spectrum did go bad at this point in the game, right? Because it's the fastest way to get some cash and it's the fastest way to get the ranking because you've got to get the ranking up. Some people would play properly, uh, well, well, at least play nicely, right? And only kill the pirates. But I have to say that I just kill everything <laughs> to get the ranking up, right? Um, because you need it. Let's get that. To, uh, to get the... Um, uh, you know, to get the missions to trigger, right? And we're, we're, we need to fast track it as much as we can on this one. So let's get into uh, let's get into the station now. Is it, I'm going to let that dot me because I do want to get some fuel, right? Uh, of course, you know, there's nothing such thing as karma. <laughs> so let's buy some fuel, right? So we can get out of out of dodge if we need. Now I'm sort of vaguely heading up this way. Now there's a system up here called where is it? Is it that one? Uh, Zadie's. Analaku, somewhere around here called SOTIQ. Where is it? It's one of these. Sia, Salagion. I'm gonna have to find it. SOTIQ, so, so I think it is. There it is, right. Okay, that we want to go here, right? Because this is probably the worst system in the entire game. It's an anarchy level four, right? So there's, there's no good reason for going there at all. It's an anarchy. That's kind of where I'm heading. Um, just generally in the back of my head, so to cue, because it's the worst system in the game. <laughs> um, even worse than Ridquat, I think. Um, at least it, it is in my mind, right? Um, so yeah, lack of life support in cargo space used to turn slaves into fertilizer in Elite 2. No, that definitely happened. That definitely happened. Um, right, so I've launched from the space station um, as you can see, uh, but I'm going to turn around and I'm going to attack it. <laughs> now I can't kill the space station at the moment, it's effectively invulnerable even to my ship with its military lasers, but watch what happens. So not surprisingly, they switch off docking control, right? Um, and then what should happen is ships start spawning, right? Okay, so what's happening here is the Vipers have now come out and attack me. So now the cops will try and deal with me. And look at the frame rate drug chugging now. Boom, right, there's one Viper down. Missiles. Ooh. This can be. Escape pod. <laughs> right, did I get, I got three there. And slaves, is it? Is it going to spawn anymore? Sometimes that's all it's got, right? <laughs> uh, let's turn around. What's it? What's it doing? It looks like there's more stuff. There's a piece of debris. Um, are there more vipers coming out of the space station? Yes, there are. Okay, so there's three more vipers have launched, right? Uh, so let's slot in behind them. That's a bit mean. There we go. So that's five vipers down. <laughs> oh, there's another one. So it's really taking me seriously, okay? So, um, which is good, right? So that's six vipers dealt with. There's the seventh one. <laughs> Bad boy, Drew. Just police murderer now. Um, so yeah, so you could you could be a proper. At least I mean, at least the game tried to deal with you, right? So that's seven vipers destroyed. Are they still launching? Um, yes, they are. <laughs> it will give up eventually, I think, um, and just sort of go, right, okay, we ran out of vipers. Um, but it does at least try to deal with you, right? And if you're in a lesser equipped ship, I can see quite a lot of debris on the screen. Right, there we go. Right, so let's, there's, there's, there's still at least one more viper out there. Um, so the game does try to, to deal with me. Um, which, is, which I think is nice, right? Um, obviously on Elite Dangerous, the space station just opens fire off with its own weapons. But in this version of Elite, the, the, um, the space station does not have its own weapons. Um, so I think that's mostly just, oh no, look, there's another Viper there. So it's launched at least eight or 10, right? <laughs> um, there we go, right, where is it? Ooh, there it is. You can see the frame, the computer struggling now with the frame rate. Ah, oh, bring it around, round, 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 round. Come on, turn, turn, turn. <laughs> I 
but you can see how you know once you're familiar with piloting let's give the space station a blast just because we can space station does have an ecm by the way <laughs> so you can't missile it um even the frame rates die <laughs> it's funny isn't it right oh it's still foam there's another it says launched at least 10 maybe 12 ships at me right so i think it may just keep spawning them until i give up um, or until it kills me right um yeah there's at least two out there it's a good way to get some um, get your um, rating up right <laughs> slightly morally ambiguous way of getting your rating up but Right, there's another one down. <laughs> oh, laser temperature in there. Oh, another one launched there. So it's really, it's just trying. It just keeps launching vipers at you. So it may never stop. Um, so let's just get this with them. What I'll show you is the other technique you can use and we'll see how long it takes them to give up. Um, so I'll make a run away from the space station. Right, that'll do, right. So let's get the space station to our reverse. It's still firing at me, right? There's at least one more Viper out there. Um, so let's get it, get it behind me. Right, so that's the space station. Right, we're now running away, effectively. But what I can do is I can still shoot with my rear gun, <laughs> which is the mining laser, right? Um, which is actually quite a powerful weapon. As I can, <laughs> yeah, like a boss, shot him from behind, right? <laughs> um, and then the Vipers will, if I can get out of the space station range, then it won't keep spawning Vipers at me, right? And then I can get away. Because once I'm out of range of the space station, it will, it will stop spawning Vipers. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah the game is this is the, this is the design genius of this original game okay yeah i mean the graphics are rubbish right by modern standards and the frame rate is 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 is, is a joke but um the gameplay right the gameplay is good right because um you know something's happening all the time i don't you never get a let off if you're looking for trouble you can find it really quickly in this game um <laughs> So if I can get the space station far enough out of range. Now, these guys are still going to be after me, okay? They're not going to give up um, just because I'm running away. So at least I've got at least three Vipers, possibly four. What I need to do is get the space station out of range so they won't they won't keep spawning on me. Uh, but they're trying hard, okay? They're, they're, there's four of them there. Um, and I'm because I'm running, they're basically in pursuit. And you can see they're trying to get a bead on me. Um, and I'm down to the second energy unit. So if I don't do something, I will die, right? Um because you know they're good enough shots that they will take me down. Um, so this, this the, the, the thing I like about this is it's got this um, um, sort of Star Trekky feel to it here. Is that you've got a rear view right that you can look at and then you can switch the right switch stuff. And when when we were kids, right, we used to play this together. And some of us would be in charge of flying the ship, and somebody would be in charge of the the view controls, and somebody would be in charge of the weapons and the tactics and all this sort of stuff, right? Um, so. <laughs> We'd all take turns and we'd all like shout out Captain Kirky things like, right, evasive maneuvers, full power to shield, arm weapons, open fire with main phaser banks and all this sort of stuff. And it was, it was very, very childish, but huge fun, right? <laughs> so actually you can now see the effects of the game doing its concentration of fire. It is actually, it has actually done quite a lot of damage to my ship in the sense that the shields are down now. Um, and oh, actually, I'm, you know, I am in a little bit of trouble here. I may need to hyperspace out. Oh, hyperspace range. Let's quickly do that. And uh, now I'm in trouble. Ah, it's because I've got the hyperspace lock in the wrong system. I may, I may have left that too long. So always be ready for a hyperspace jump, right? Um. Uh, oh no! <laughs> it's it got me. The police of justice. <laughs> But sure, the game's still dangerous, right? The game is still capable of killing me, even though I've got an Uber ship, which is good. To, which is good game design. <laughs> uh, it was awesome. The police wiped me out. <laughs> Just as well I'd saved, right? So anyway, there we go. Um, so that's that's murdering the police. Let's not do that again. So now you've seen it, right? <laughs> that was good. Um, so let's go off to off to over here. Um, and continue our quest to, to go destroying things. Um, 
So off we go. Because we've got to keep our rating. I hope I did I save it when we get to competent. I think I, oh no, it didn't. Ah no, that was bad. Um, I didn't save. I didn't <laughs> didn't save it early enough. Oops. Always save your game right when something crucial is happening. Uh, damn, I'm gonna have to go and get that competent status back. That won't take long because we weren't very far away from it. Um, it's just a problem. You get all excited, and you forget. <laughs> um, but yeah. So the game is the game is still good, right? I left that too long. Timed it badly. And this is what I think why the original game is so legendary, right? Because it it. Because the graphics were quite primitive, you had to chuck your imagination into the game a bit. But it did sort of feed that in the way that it worked. Um, which which was which was cool. Um, and you kind of you started thinking about well why is that pirate in that system and why is that trader travelling there? And um, your brain sort of filled in the gaps with the um, um, you know, you know the gaps in what the game could actually do. It filled, it filled in, your imagination filled it in because there, there was no alternative. Uh, but the game was good enough that so that sense of immersion um, was there. Um, and um, you know, little touches like the anaconda chucking out two ships, which kind of gave you the impression there were big ships and small ships, and um, you know all that sort of good stuff was um, was was all part of what made the game good, right? Uh, <laughs> um, I still haven't come across a beam laser equipped ship yet, so that's going to be fun. But we'll sort of hack our way across the galaxy and go for. Is that a missile? No, I'm good. Um, I shot the missile down there. But the, the key thing in this part of the game is to just go murdering things, right? And, and build up your thing. But um, as you can see, the cops in numbers. This is interesting, the game scales, okay? So when you have about. up to about four opponents at this level the game is you can beat it right but if you get oh this is an anaconda again it's going to launch right watch this it's going to launch two ships there it goes right let's murder the anaconda because it's oh it's two sidewinders this time so that's you know multi-crew right <laughs> for the uh, for the uh, for the npcs at any rate um I know I can deal with those two guys. Sidewinders are not too much of a problem to my current ship. There we go, pick those up. Um, so I've destroyed the mothership and then I'll take on the escorts, right? There we go. Don't get much for a sidewinder, but, but there we go. Whoa! <laughs> that was... Uh, that was a bit close. At least the NPCs do try and attack you, right? They're, yeah, they're okay. They've got their pre-programmed movements is what they do, and they sort of bank and turn and twist and stuff. But it's airplanes in space, right, on this version of the game. Um, right, I'm guessing he's the engine bay of the sidewinder. Oh, there goes a missile. A bit pointless firing at me from behind. But there we go, got a bit desperate. Oh right now this is this is a nice scale to that. This is this is the game being bad. Okay, so I've got two pirates on opposite corners and a group of three, or possibly two or three, directly ahead. What's it giving me? It's giving me two. Okay, so a group of four pirates jumping me. So that's that's nasty. Okay, the game is now doing its scaling up thing. Because okay, you want a bit more of a challenge, do you? So here you go. Try this. So I've chosen the wrong ship. That's a crate. Right, that's good. Let's get that bit of cargo. Sidewinders don't normally drop cargo, so the crate is the one that's worth having. Um, and we get 10 credits for them. All right, so that's good. So he was carrying narcotics. Always good. I'm going to have a missile handy on this one. That's the sidewinder still. Uh, or is it? Yes, it is. Let's get that round. Yay. Right, let's find out what else we've got. Target loss basically means the missile was locked onto that ship, but obviously when it's destroyed, the missile doesn't know where it went, so it just says target lost. Well, he was not happy. <laughs> so they've tangled with the wrong guy today, as they've now worked out. 
It's another crate. Now there's a nice little, there's a there's a small little, th oh, I think that's a viper now. So we're gonna kill him because we don't like vipers anymore, right? Because <laughs> they killed me. Please got their comeuppance. Or is that a bird lance? I think a bird lance, yeah. Oh, this is an interesting thing. He's launched his escape pod. Notice now that once the escape pod is launched, the ship is unpiloted, which sort of makes sense, right? So I can chase after it. Actually, I can fly up behind it. And the, the pilot has left it on full throttle, right? So what you could do here, if you wanted to, this is this is, this is is quite fun. I used to do this quite a lot, is you can match course and speed, right? It's very Star trek -y. Um by um, It's quite difficult without yaw, but you can sort of do it like that. Let's see if I can get the other side of the ship, because I think that's the more interesting side of the ship. And I'm full throttle, right? So the, the guy has flown his ship off at quite a speed. But what I can do, if I can get on the same vector as him, is over, slowly overhaul him, right? That's about the same vector, right? Okay. And then I can turn him to the side. There we go. I've done it. This is quite fun, right? And then we, then you can like have a look at the ship when you overtake him. So I'm not quite on the same vector, but it's close enough, right? Um, and he's traveling at quite a speed, but his ship will not maneuver anymore because um, he is, you know, he's not, he's no longer aboard. There's no pilot. <laughs> so what I can do when I catch him up, and it's gonna take a little while just to get alongside him, right? Um, and there's no collision detection other than your ship, so that asteroid is going to go straight through. <laughs> Watch that go past. There it goes. Um, right, but what I can do is, as he drops off there, if I keep the vector right, I can, I should be able to overhaul him on the left-hand side, so we can get alongside him. <laughs> Here he comes. It's trying to decide if I've got that right. I'm not sure if I quite got it. There he is. Right. Okay. And then I can slow down a tiny bit. That's too much. And sort of match speed and course <laughs> by little tweaks. There we go of the of the attitude, so I can get a nice view of the ships. So there we go. We have got the abandoned Ferdinands just flying through space at full whack. They will just keep doing that, right? <laughs> and it's flying at virtually my full speed. You can see if I just drop it down to about there, it's literally about the same speed. Um, so I, you know, it's just one of those things that you did. Just watch it for a bit, because it's the only time you got to have a good look at the ship, right? Um, so there we go. Right, so let's drop in behind it, let it go ahead a bit, and then I'm going to blast it, obviously, because I want the cargo. So it's now effectively running shields down. Boom. Oh, it's only got alloys anyway. So that was the thing that you did, right? <laughs> I don't know why. It just kind of struck me as quite a fun thing to try and do. Because um, it's the only time the other ships don't fly around, right? So you can you can have a look at the um, have a look at what they look like, and you can do that with any of them. Yeah, asp. Any, the moment they launch an escape pod, um, they will literally just fly straight. Uh, right. So Cobra. Oh, let me heat the laser. So we were competent. I've just got to get back up to competent again after having tangled with the police, which was slightly unfortunate. But I wasn't as good as I thought I was, right? Um, you can still be killed by the game. Our slaves and slaves. There we go. He was a bad boy too. The RNG made him a bad boy. Asteroids, you you, know, you do get a kill for, but they're not really worth much. Half a credit, as you can see, because there's no combat value in taking them down because they don't manoeuvre. Um, another pirate. Um, 
It always made me feel like Clint Eastwood when he managed to shoot down the missile. Yes, that's 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 a trick shot, right? Because unfortunately, the missiles spawn directly in front of the ship, which does mean if you've got the target lock on, you're going to hit it quite relatively easily, right? But um, well, there's an escape pod. There we go. Slaves, more slaves. Can't be naughty. Let's, let's see how we're doing, right? So we are. Oh, I'll be back with you. It's all above average. I've got to get back up. Let's keep murdering. What have we got here? A viper? Yeah. A viper. There we go. Where's the missile? Got him. <laughs> um, target lost. Uh, another one. That looks like another viper. Slaves, we like slaves, right? Can we dock here yeah, if you can? <laughs> um, right, so we're getting there, right? Okay, so let's, let's just refuel. So the idea is he we're heading towards um, Soviet Cubes, and let's just keep doing that. Move across the chart, murdering and slashing our way through everything that exists. Um, the other thing we couldn't do, of course, is we can do that hyperspace cheap. Oh yes, I must say, good, good call there. Let's just keep making sure I save. I don't get carried away. Very good. Um, yes, we were. Much, I was being much more religious about saving, right? Well, I should be. It's, it's a good thing to do. Um, otherwise, we lose progress. We don't want that. So more pirates. What system are we in? We're in multi-government Acelia, right? So that's not too bad. Now, just be careful. I don't end up in a dead end. Sometimes you can. I think that's a. That's not a bad destination, but we haven't got enough fuel. So, all right, I'm going to make my way across the chart a bit faster now and just deal with the stuff that gets in the way of that, um, like this guy. Another ASP. So I think we've seen the entire range of Spectrum ships now. I don't think there are any others we haven't seen. We've seen the third lance. That's one of the last ones you get to see because it's a bounty hunter, uh, although occasionally you do get to see it just flying around ignoring you. Um, but now, because we're fugitive, it's taking an interest. But we haven't seen a, an equipped one with um, a beam laser yet. They're all kind of pulse laser level ships, which is not too much of a challenge. The beam laser ones, when you first get hit by one, it comes as a bit of a shock. Because you go, whoa! <laughs> oh. Pick up the escape pod. Turn around. I have to get this asp quite quick because the asp its top speed is actually higher than the cobra and the throttle goes to full when the guys run right so you can see he's already over there um got him a bit shooting um so yeah i think the asp has a top speed about 30 percent higher than the cobra so it's quite a far ship in the elite uh, and so in, in this game in elite the asp is a military vessel um so it's supposed to be quite tough that's definitely a Cobra. There's the missile. As you can see, homing in on the... Actually, what you can do sometimes here is just jump around a little bit. And what will happen is the missile will peg in behind me. Let's just do that. All right, it's missed me. Okay, what it's going to do... This is, this is another game we used to play on the Spectrum, is that you maneuver in the missile. You wait. Oh, it got me. I <laughs> didn't see it. <laughs> Boom. Uh, sometimes you can play with a missile. I'll, I'll, I'll try. It's a bit dangerous, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure I've done a good save before we play that game. There's there's lots of little silly games that you, as you've got more experience with the game, to keep yourself occupied, you started to play, right? And missile dodging was one of them. Um, I'll show you that when we're a little bit further on. I don't want to lose the progress in the, in, in the interim. Um, but yeah, you can play games with missiles. And there was a bit of a standing joke. There were certain tactics you could do that the AI of the missiles couldn't really cope with, um, uh, which meant that if you did certain things, you were uh, effectively invulnerable to a missile. But I didn't get it right there. <laughs> uh, but it was a bit of a risky one, right? Um, does this game have an analog of Galnet? Not really, no. There's nothing in-game here that tells you what's going on. 
the only thing that you have is basically the behavior of the NPCs and that basically is dependent on what you do uh, and your legal status so there isn't a there isn't a story in the game here um, what you had instead because basically because of the limitations of the game there isn't space in the computer to put anything like that right but what you do have and I've got it uh, I thought I've got it out hang on let me go and get it for those of you who haven't seen this I've seen it, I've shown this a few times on the screen, but this is the box, right, that, that the game came in. Sorry, there's a bit of a glare there. Uh, and what you got in that was, you got the story, right, in the book. <laughs> this tells you what you need to know. So, um, so this is a full, it's a full length novella. It's about eight to 10,000 words, right? It's in here, it's 48 pages long. So it's a, it's a story and it says here, there you go. I don't know if you can, let me, look at, let me zoom it up to full screen for a moment. Um, you know, there we are. Oh, no, wrong button. There we are. Um, there we go. A boy with stars in his eyes shooting the rapids of heaven. Okay, so that's read the novel, play the game. That's that's how it starts, right? Uh, Elite the Dark Wheel is a novella written by Rob Holstock and inspired by the intergalactic space trading adventure game Elite by David Braben and Ian Bell. Um, and so it's that's that's Galnet for the for the first game, right? It sets the scene and tells you what's going on in the background to the space that you're flying through. So that's that's how that works. Um, so yeah, kind of, <laughs> oops, and pirates are coming in, um, kind of, <laughs> a bit tongue in cheek, kind of the same state as Galnet now, right? Yes, there's <laughs> nothing going on. Um, so no, you, what you would do is you would read the story and it, you know, it, it, it was a, it was a, yeah, it was a good story. Um, um, but it was, um, you know, it's, it's by modern standards, quite a derivative story, I suppose. But um, you know, back then, this was this is the era that we only have one Star Wars film, right? Um, so it was. Um, oh, I shot the missile. I shot the missile, but I didn't shoot the deputy. <laughs> Get that nice tasty cargo canister because you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, the cargo canister is totally RNG. Food is actually a bit of a waste of waste of our time, unfortunately. But um, there's more ships. Out. Oh no, that, that was just debris. Right. Okay. So we've now cleared that. Let's get this guy. Get some fuel. And we'll keep. We'll keep. We'll keep moving on. Right. Um, so yeah. So you didn't have Galnet. Um, the the first time that a um, in-game thing happened. Uh, really was actually the third of the game, Frontier First Encounter, where you had a series of newspapers that told you what was going on. And by newspaper, I mean digital thing in the game, right? Um, and they were very clever, those ones, because you had, I think there were five. Um, we can show those at some point. Um, and I've shown them on streams before, right? Um, and um, because the third game was still a single player game right the newspapers were sort of keyed most of the articles in them were just fluff right as much of galnet has been accused of being um, but quite a, some of the articles weren't fluff okay uh, and you as the player had to kind of learn to read between what was fluff and what wasn't fluff um, and what would happen is some of the newspapers had a had a federal sort of affiliation some of them had an imperial one some of them were independent and some of them were just plain nuts right <laughs> and as you proceeded through your career in in frontier elite uh, frontier first encounters what would happen is that you know the newspapers would report on the antics of a certain commander you know yeah uh, mostly anonymous for the most part of the game and um you know if you did something good for the Federation, the Federation newspaper would be lauding you, saying you're a cool guy and you know what a what a brave heroic action. But at the same time, the Imperial newspaper would be saying what a dastardly scheme by the Federation. This this blackguard. We should we should shoot him down and deal with him, right? <laughs> so the, the the newspapers made you feel like you were actually you know impacting the galaxy because you would appear anonymously at first in in the newspapers and some of the newspapers would be writing very derogatory things about you <laughs> which was actually i thought really nice um and back when elite dangerous first came out i did ask um frontier you know we're oh, we gonna we're we gonna bring those newspapers back because that was one of the best features you know you can have all these newspapers so rather than just galnet which was like it seems sort of like a maybe like a digest of all the news in the elite dangerous universities that it used to um 
then um, you know these newspapers had you know they would the Federal Times would always give you a federal spin on any event right and the Imperial what was it the Imperial Herald I think it was um, would give you the Empire spin and then there was Universal Scientists which tend to concentrate on discoveries and cool stuff in the game and things like that so you know they, you've got different flavor text from different organizations um, Um, so all that sort of stuff did add texture to the to the to the game, right? But at this era of the game, no, there's literally just a manual. Um, so so there we go. Right, space station base. Let's dock. Uh, first mission was a race. That's right, the Wick and Wear race, wasn't it? Um, and you had to travel across space to get things. Um, right, let's just fuel, and let's just keep on moving on, right? Uh, where are we going? Uh, oh, we're going there. Okay. Biram, Biram Abbey. I remember some of these names. It's kind of weird. Um, we have been spoiled by the graphics. When I played Elite Original, I'm sure the effects are my imagination. Yeah, so the, the, this is the funny thing. Playing this game now, I mean, I'm looking at it, and one part of me is going, my God, look how low res it is. Um, and, you know, how appalling the frame rate is. And, and all those sort of things, right? But the other part of me is just being 15 again, going, this is the most awesomest game I've ever seen. And I'm in space, and I'm flying a spaceship, and I'm battling space pirates, and isn't that cool, right? <laughs> it's, it's schizophrenic, really. Um, so you know that. Yeah, part part of my looking at it, it is just simply isn't hasn't dated, but obviously comparing it to modern games, it, it's just unrecognisably bad. And that I think is 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 potentially one of the problems with modern games, right? Is that you know, you know back back. Back when this game was out, you know, the genius was in the gameplay, right? Because there wasn't much, particularly with these vector graphics, right? There wasn't that much you could do with the computers at the time. You know, basically all we've got here is we're stringing together a few polygons and trying to make them as distinct as possible. Um, and that is the best we can do, right? The only difference between the elite ships in Elite is the number of lines that make them up, right? <laughs> they, are, they are just triangles all connected together. Um, so the genius of Elite of the game is is the open-ended gameplay and the fact that um, you've got this universe of pirates and traders and, and you know, you've got um, uh, bounty hunters and you've got the police and you've got the Thargoids hanging around in the background sometimes. All those elements, right, which are still Elite Dangerous thing. But they could afford to spend all their time really working on the gameplay because once you've got the graphics together there's not really much more you can do you can't you can't improve the graphics on these computers really there's, they can't do any more right um, animating these lines is is all they can do um, you know there's no concept here of you know there's there's no way to improve the resolution of the computer uh, there's no way to increase the clock speed, right? There's no way to do any of that stuff that we're used to today with PCs, right? So there's no way to, um, you know, overcome the limitations of the machine. Um, you know, even the later versions of the Spectrum um, had, um, you know, solid keyboards um, and they had faster tape loaders and some of the later ones had uh, more memory and floppy disk drives, right, of a, of a type. But... Um, the basic machine underneath was still the same 3.5 megahertz, right? So the, it didn't get faster. Um, its graphics resolution never changed. Um, the way it did its graphics never changed. Everything was the same. That's interesting. I shot that and it's left somewhere behind. I think that was an anaconda. I don't, I don't think it got a chance to launch its ships. <laughs> Oops. Um, more, mur mur more murdering there. Um, so you had to work with the limitations of the, the computer, right? And you only had a certain amount of memory, okay? You only had a certain amount of memory. Um, you know, in the case of the Spectrum, you had about 32,000 bytes left after the computer booted. So everything you had to do, the entire game, all the graphics, all the sounds, everything, on all these early computers had to fit in that space. So the genius of developing games back then was to cram as much ingenuity and gameplay into that limitation as you could. 
there was no concept of coming back later and audit, adding a texture pack or anything like that, right? You just couldn't do it. Um, there was no concept of coming back and revisiting, you know, for a later version of the hardware that had more capability. That wasn't a thing. Um, the only thing that some of the later 16-bit versions did, they did produce more enhanced computers, but the 8-bit ones were pretty much set in stone. Um, oh, I just ran that escape pod. <laughs> Oops. Um, but he was carrying drugs anyway, so he deserved to die. Um, oh, a little bit low on... Gotta be careful here. A bit low on energy. It's these pesky vipers, they always come in. No, you're not. <laughs> there you go. Right. You're coming into my cargo hold. Let's just let the uh, shield energy banks recharge a bit. Let's go and get that viper. Um, you know, so the, the computer was as it was. Um, and you had to develop for it. And so, um, whereas nowadays, of course, the problem you have is that everybody expects photorealism, right? Or close to, depending on the genre of the game you're developing, of course. But everyone expects 60 FPS minimum, right? Everyone expects, um, you know, textures that when you get close to them, you don't, you don't, you know, they, they still look great, right? Um, you, everyone expects seamless transitions and no drop and people want uh, don't want loading screens and all those sort of things right we've, be we've become used to um, it's such a level of fidelity in a game today um, that anything below that just isn't acceptable anymore okay um, other than the kind of some of the indie developers right who will do different weird things but you know for games that are um, oh, we've been bad we've been bad we've been too bad in this system <laughs> <laughs> you can't dock. Um, that's a bit annoying. I'm going to have to go back out to get the fuel. Alright, look at that. Shot down. It's not going to let me dock. That's annoying. This is an occupational hazard as you're a fugitive, right? So you've got to find your way back to... Where's the star? Now, this, is, this is the other thing that's hard work. Where is the star? Um, can't find it. Sometimes you spend all your time wandering around trying to figure out where... <laughs> <laughs> the star is. Um, let's just sort of keep rolling and spinning a bit, see if we can find it. Because uh, now, uh, now I'm in a situation. This does occasionally happen, right? There it is. Um, where the space station won't let me in. I haven't got enough fuel to move on. So I want to go over there, probably, um, but I can't <laughs> because I'm stuck. Um, so um, yeah, but so modern games, right? You need to have good graphics. You need to have really, really good sound. It's got to be stereo. It's got to be positional. It's got to work on lots of different types of hardware, right? So you've got to test it on Nvidia. You've got to test it on whatever is it AMD? It used to be AMD. Um, you know, lots of different types of hardware and all lots sorts of stuff, right? Um, so that makes modern games development way, way slower um, than it kind of was here. We could you could bang out a title. Yeah, you know, a good title in a few months on a, on the ZX Spectrum, it was done. Uh, whereas you just can't do that today. Radion, that's what it's called nowadays. Yeah, um, um, yeah. You need to have massive, massive packs of textures. You know, gigabytes of content, which is just what stuff looks like, rather than just the lines that we had had in the eighties. Um, and um, because that's how games have developed, right? The games have come on, and they are, you know, they're much, much different things. Uh, than they were in this era um, and the part of the problem with that is because it looks so fabulous you don't need to use your imagination so much right because it's all there in front of you you can see it whereas you know in this version we're flying through space towards the star right but the star is just literally a circle on the screen um, and um, you know, that that's all it is and you know these spaceships are, 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 are the baddie pirates but they're literally just NPCs that are spawning and they're very simple graphics um, in order to deal with it right so I want to get to this star and refuel so we can keep moving on um, and that's that is a problem I think because you know to introduce a new game the the threshold that you need to get to nowadays is, is really high, right? Really high. Because you've got to tick all those boxes before you've even got anywhere. You know, you know, you've got to create you know a, a compelling world for your your game to, to be in and make sure your graphics are great. And every new 
thing that you put into that world requires the same amount of dev effort, right? It's um, it's a it's a lot of work, um, and you know, it, 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 it's it's hard, I think, um, to to build a game today by comparison. Uh, now that's not to take anything away from the people who wrote these games, of course, because these were the state of the art computers of the time. Um, and you know this, you know, the ZX Spectrum actually was lauded at the time for having one of the most high-resolution displays of a of a home computer at all. So this was um, this was high-res graphics in in this era. It was um, you know a long time before PCs and things caught up with the the, the, the amount of graphics on the screen um, here that you're seeing on a on a ZX Spectrum. Um, and you know the graphics are good enough that your sense of immersion is still is still there. Oh, there we go. Oh, can't believe we get a pirate right close to the star. That's really irritating. Um, but anyway, so um, it's it's it's. I mean, it's a different era, right? It's a different era. We're, we're you know we're we're forty almost forty years away from this this era of technology now, um, and and things have changed dramatically. But where Certainly, in the early days of the ZX Spectrum and, and the BBC, a a single person, right, a single person, could write a game like this. You know, and in the case of um, Elite, obviously it was two. It was David Braben and Ian Bell. Um, you know, two people could write this game. You didn't need a team of musicians and QA and graphic design artists and you know um, server engineers and and all the all those things, right, that you now need today to make a even a, in a single player game, because you you know the graphics were so primitive, still great I think for what they were, but they could be designed by people who weren't <laughs> artists if you see what I mean, um, and the music you know there isn't any okay the sound effects are like zut, 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 zut. you know you could probably do that in an afternoon, um, oh this is a busted pirate coming in while we're sitting here refueling. Um, the game is merciless here; it doesn't doesn't care. <laughs> um, so I do have to be a little bit careful. I'm going to just sit still and see if I can shoot him without moving. Now another. Um, uh, let me just wait for this guy. He's moving. Oh, he's, he's an asp. Got to watch that cabin temperature. Skips it on. We're good, right? Um, <laughs> um, oh, there's another one. Can you believe it? All right, we should be we should be refueled by the time he turns up. Um, at least enough to jump. No, he's right on the edge of our jump range. Come on. This is where. <laughs> do I engage? Do I wait for the fuel scoops to pick up? Uh, Asteroids will always be perfect to me, says Frank. Yeah, see, that's another great game. Okay, that's very very simple vector graphics. Really good gameplay, right? I have to deal with this guy as well, aren't I? Oh, annoying. What is it? Is that a viper? Gotcha. Alright, fuel scoops are still on. Oh, that was a cobra. Okay. Let's just wait until we get full tank of fuel. So yeah, so retro game and indies are on the right. So yeah, yeah, you know, those those are good, right? Yeah, you know, we can still play these types of games that people can still. Play. But you know, Elite was written by two people. Okay, tested by some people clearly, but written by two people. Lords of Midnight, which is another great game, really innovative title. We should I should show you that at some point. Um, written by one guy, and he not only wrote the game and did the graphics and did the you know the text and the, all the in-game stuff, right? But he wrote the novel that went with it as well. He was an English teacher, okay. Mike Singleton sadly again died, but um, he was an English teacher, and he turned his hand to computer game and wrote one of the definitive games for the ZX Spectrum in a, in about three months. And it's, and it's virtually perfect. It's virtually bug free. Um, so you know it can be done, and it could be done in this era. You know, it was it was a, there's lots of books about it. The, the era of the bedroom coders. 
Um, and you know, bigger companies did eventually get in and take over. But in the early days, it was all about just just people in their room with a Spectrum, right, or a BBC or a C64, um, coding away and selling what they could make. Um, so it was it was good times in that sense. Okay, you know, a, a different era. Whereas you, you can't imagine a phenomenally successful game now being written by one person. It's just you know. It, I suppose Minecraft, maybe, maybe you can get away with saying Minecraft. Um, and actually, the guy who's done uh, Space Engine, um, who is a Russian chap whose name I, <laughs> I cannot pronounce. Oh, they're still not letting me in. This is just mean. Oh. Right, let's save, because we don't lose any progress. I've obviously become so bad that none of these, <laughs> these systems are letting me in. So I'm going to have to refuel at the start again. This is the only problem with being a fugitive, right? Just, nobody wants to know you. I can't get in. I haven't lost my docking computer. In. No, docking computers are still there. I thought sometimes you lose equipment, right? Because um, you, um, you, it can be damaged. But uh, no, I haven't. It's just I'm just too bad. <laughs> um, I'm only an offender here, though. Well, I am competent. That's good. Okay, so we've got our rating back, um, which is which is good. Uh, and I've got a hole full of ill-gotten games with eleven tons of slaves. <laughs> um, why is my this is interesting why is my jump drive not working that implies there's something on the scanner but I can't see anything and the space station is down there we go the space station was in range that's why okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to lay off the attacking for a bit <laughs> <laughs> We're in a corporate state, so this is so obviously they've got high standards here, right? So um, I suppose I could have just attacked that Python. The Pythons are in, actually, I'm going to attack the Python. Pythons are annoying, right? Because they're really slow. Let's just murder the Python. There we go. Head back for the sun. Um, so yeah, so um, Toby Fox made almost everything uh, Undertale. I haven't come across Undertale. I'm gonna have to look that one up. Okay, interesting point. Oh, yeah, it might have been Anaconda. It was. Got it before it launched. Is that himself? No. That is. Ah, oh, one of the sidewinders got off before I destroyed it. Never mind, eh? Um. see it because it's right in the sun um, so I'm flying straight at it <laughs> suddenly appear at <laughs> point blank range so it gives the enemy a slight tactical advantage what ship is it there it is is that an asteroid no anaconda again but it was too slow <laughs> um, there you go look a Cobra Mark 3 can take out an anaconda in about two seconds in this game uh, which is quite funny. <laughs> oh, this one's launching. Oh, another anaconda. There's quite a few anacondas in the system. There's anyway, right, that's what we've got here. Uh, crate again. Sidewinder or something out there, probably. Let's get that cargo canister. It's always worth picking up the cargo. You want the money, right? I kind of feel I need the um, Pirates of the Caribbean music playing in the background. <laughs> Unfortunately, that will get my that will get my stream muted, right? Um, but um, that's another thing. I mean, a question for the chat actually. For those of you who played this game back in the time, what did you what did you play as music? Alongside, I used to play. Um, I used to play my cassettes, right? Um, so it would be th things like um, Eurythmics and um, later on the Pet Shop Boys and stuff like that. When I was <laughs> slaughtering my way through space, um, <laughs> that's, that's uh, maybe Manic Monday by the Bangles or something like that. Those are the sort of things I used to play when I uh, was playing this game. Um, um, in case you can hear a thump outside, I think my kids are playing ball. <laughs> 
cheeky monkeys. Um, right, it feels good because I'm right. Let's just sit there and refuel. So where are we going? Right. Um, that one's out of range, I think. 7.6. That one looks like it's just on the boundary. Of 6. There we go. Let's go there. That is a communist system. And they've got lethal brandy and great parking meters. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I don't know if this screen updates in real time actually showing me the jump range let's find out but i don't think it does i think i have to flip between it to get it to respawn yeah it doesn't do it in real time but it does sort of show the jump range increasing as you as you're filling up um so the guy who made a game called dust and lissy and tail who coded the game but made all the graphics and i think he might have done the music but he might not okay so shame limit theory never saw yeah limit theory looked good didn't it i was quite looking forward to that mixtapes were a thing so a bit of everything yeah viper 2 okay yeah <laughs> that was great times wasn't it you had your twin cassette deck <laughs> put the top 40 on on sunday afternoon and just record stuff right and the moment they and the trick was is to is you'd have your finger on the pause button right waiting for the commentator to say and in the number five it's <laughs> you had to had to press the pause button to try and chop that off because you didn't want that bit and then you unpause it when the next song <laughs> came along <laughs> and when you listen back you got this and click <laughs> this horrible sound as the as the tape player was interrupted from recording <laughs> and on the later ones and you got soft touch do you remember that the logic controls came out where it wasn't actually a mechanical press you press the pause button and the machine would do the the pause for you that was that was proper technology right <laughs> i had loads of mixtapes and i've still got some actually of stuff i recorded off the radio right radio radio one what time was it was it about was it four or five p.m. on Sunday afternoons? They used to do the top forty, and of course it was a it was a big thing back in those days because um, that's how you learned what the, that that that's how you found out what was new music because they had this top forty chart. <laughs> Some people on the street might not even know what this is, but what um, what used to happen was <laughs> I'm sort of reminiscing about the eighties in general. Now uh, was it was it four p.m. Excellent. Um, I remember it was a big deal. Right, so you you tune your radio in. Radio one was, I don't know, it was FM ninety. What is it? I don't even know what radio one is anymore. Um, it was ninety ninety something FM, and um, you would listen. And and basically, the top forty was a list of all the popular pop songs and rock songs and stuff of, of the time, based on I assume record sales, uh, you know, records as in forty five RPM spinning discs. Which again, some of you may not even know what that is either, but I'm sure you've come across them. Um, yeah, and so, was it 96.7? I can't remember, something like that. 96.7. Um, and you tune your radio in and you could put your cassette player, and later on you had cassette decks actually, which were integrated, and you would just record your favourite. Now, this was highly illegal, okay? This was, you weren't allowed, technically you weren't allowed to do it, but why people sold recording. Um, recording mechanisms for things that could receive radio and, and thought people won't use it to record the radio <laughs> i've no idea but that's what we did right so you would record rather than buying the album or buying the track you would record off the radio um and then you would make a mixtape right and this was this was this was you know i suppose for um certainly for me and my friends it was um, a way to exchange different types of music. It was sort of social media of a type, right? You would. <laughs> That's right. It was ninety-eight to ninety-nine FM. That was the jingle. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, oh, pirates. Dun, 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 um, and you would record this, and you would make a mixtape, and you basically had two, pretty much two types of cassette. You had a C sixty cassette, which was thirty-five minutes aside. And you had a C90, which was 45 minutes aside. And occasionally you could get a C120, but the tape in that was really thin and, and tended to get screwed up quite easily. So you tended to stick with the C C60s and the C90s, right? Um, and you would record your music, and you would basically press record while the, pl the, the radio was playing the track, and then press pause while the, the DJ was doing his bit in between. Um, or if you couldn't be bothered, then you just... You just just let him ramble on um, and um, he used to tape these things off because the problem buying an L I can't remember now how much a, a, an LP and a, sing a, re a single record was um, can anyone remember in the 80s how much was an LP I seem to remember 599 for an LP um, is that was that about right um, 
<laughs> and all the different types of tape. So you had your basic normal bias tape, then you had chrome dioxide type two tapes and metal tapes, didn't you? I don't think I ever saw a metal tape. I think I've got a couple of chrome dioxide ones. Um, can anyone remember how much an LP was in the 80s? Um, 599, I was right, 599, there we go. Okay, so an LP, I, a long play record, for those who don't know what LP is, uh, was 599, um, we think. And a double, a double one was 7.99. Okay, um, there were a few of those. So you get a record, with, you know, a full album of music for 5.99. How much was a? Can anyone remember how much a single was then? Um, oh, sh <laughs> then you must have just spotted Shadewood on all the ball hating ages for the audio. Is that the second one? Has the second one appeared, or is that the first one? Because the first one's been up for a little while. Ah, um, I can dock. <laughs> Last. So a, a single would cost you one pound ninety nine. Um, okay. Oh, we're still fugitive because we're, we're bad, right? But we, we we're good and bad, right? But let's sell some of our ill-gotten games. Oh no, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Um, right. Let's sell our ill-gotten gains here, right? So we're going to sell four tons of food, and we're going to sell four tons of textiles and three tons of radioactives. And 12 tons of slaves, why not, right? Um, and some luxuries, some narcotics, nice. There we go, we've made some money. Um, as you can see, piracy isn't as lucrative as trading, right? We made a lot more money trading um, than we have just slaughtering our way through things. But at least we got the competent, but we're still fugitive, right? Um, but ah, oh, look, we're almost in range of SOTA Q, right? So that's what I want to get to. We've got, we've got quite of an hour, we can make that. Um, Okay, right, save, save, save. <laughs> um, uh, right, so 199. So now 199 in the 80s is probably about six quid today. Probably maybe a five, maybe fiver. Let's say a fiver. Okay, so you could buy one track, okay, and it would always come with a B side, right? So you've got another track from the album, usually one that you didn't want, to be frank. Virtually every single I've got has that I wanted the track on the A side. The track on the B side is rubbish. <laughs> and that was just the thing. Occasionally you got lucky, but most of the time you didn't. Okay, so you got you could buy a track and maybe you got a bonus track on the back um, that was half decent for one ninety nine. So that's about five quid for one track of music. So that's about one pence. That's about one pound per minute in today's money, right? So it wasn't great value. So you can see why all the school kids, right? Um, the moment somebody had a record, um, you know, and, and it's amazing we bought any albums at all, to be honest, because basically the moment anybody, all the rich kids would get the LP, right? And then all us poor kids in the playground would know somebody who's prepared to copy the LP onto cassette. And then the cassette would just go around the school and within like probably a week, everybody would have it. <laughs> And that's that was the eighties, okay. Um, and dual cassette decks. So yeah, dual cassette decks were things. So what you could do is you could basically put one cassette in one side and put another cassette in the other, and dump them across and copy them instantly. Um, and so it didn't take long before the record industry figured out what kids were doing, okay. Um, right, there we go. I can cheat, do the do the docking computer thing. Um, and then you know it was bad, right? You know those things about you know copying VHS and copying and CDs and all that sort of stuff. Well, that that all happened before with with LPs, right? Um, so it got you know home taping is killing the music industry and all this sort of stuff. And of course it never did, but um, it was we were bad. Yeah, we were we were criminals. So that made you cool at school if you were smuggling cassettes in and out of the classroom. <laughs> if you had the latest LP, you know, if um, the Pet Shop Boys released a new album or something, and you could get the cassette of it and get round the school without being caught, then yeah, that, that was kudos in those days. Okay, <laughs> that's how you got to be in with the cool crowd. Is if you had an LP that nobody else had. That's right, the tape and crossbones symbol. I've still got that on some of my LPs. Um, the tape and crossbones. If you look it up on the internet, you'll find it. The tape and crossbones um, symbol. Yeah, you know, that, that was how you. That was how you were cool. <laughs> uh, it seems so long ago now. Um, right now, this is this is Sota Q we've got here. Okay, right. Let me get fueled up because this is an anarchy system. Right, this is the. At least it should be right. The, the planet Soto Q is famous for goat soup, and but it's ravaged by a killer disease, whatever that means. Now it's rich agricultural. Where are we currently? Have we got anything worth having? 
here. So this, we're a rich industrial. This is good, right? So we can fill up our cargo hold. Now I'm going to try and do what is effectively should be the most dangerous thing in the game, right? I'm going to take the, a tasty cargo of 35 tons of computers into an anarchy system, all right? <laughs> Every pirate should be after me on, on this one. So let's, let's save the game because there is a chance I won't make this. Um, let's see if we can do it. So, so yeah, so the eight, <laughs> remember the plastic nudges at the store? Yeah, so you had these little tabs to try and stop people recording things and uh, they tried everything, but kids, kids found a way around, right? <laughs> so I did save there, didn't I? Um, let me just double check. Yeah, I've saved it again now. Right, here we go. So anarchy system, Soto Q. Soto Q is kind of in the middle of the map. So we're, let me come out of hyperspace, I'll show you. Um, there we go. So we're in the middle of the map, okay. Um, we've come across half. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna head up over here, which you can't see yet. That's kind of where they go. Um, so that's that's the ultimate objective. But we're gonna slaughter our way across the map. Um, and this will allow us to make a bit of money. Now we should. I'm surprised actually. The first thing is chucked at us is, is a friendly NPC, but let's let's destroy him. Not even firing back. Oh well. <laughs> I haven't got time to waste. I'm running out of time. I've got ten minutes. I've got to get to the Soda Q space station. Hopefully. Oh god, <laughs> there's no point even doing that because I've got a full cargo hold. Oh. Um. All right. So there's our first pirate. That should. It should give us a hard time. Maybe it won't. We'll have to see what the M the RNG comes up with. But all right. So I don't need to hang around anymore because um, I'm just in for space. Well, it's, it's, it's being nice to me. Come on, where are the pirates? Maybe they're all asleep. Um, so yeah, so um, um, scotch, ta <laughs> scotch tape, putting bits of sellotape on your cassettes too, so you could record over them and then write, protect them, and <laughs> and then there was a the whole thing about writing. What you used to do is on the on the um, inlay, um, you used to uh, yeah write on your mixtape what was on it, right? And um, then you would you know it was it was it was a courting thing as well. So you know you would impress girls by having certain things on your mixtape right and if you could get the mix right <laughs> you know you put you put cool songs and put some romantic songs in there it was it was, it was a thing that you would swap with a girl to kind of impress her <laughs> you know, so teenage mating rituals in the 80s were all about you know what audio equipment you had <laughs> and then of course when you had um when the walkman came out then you could you, you could kind of listen to it together you know it's all it's all kind of romantic so um you know it, <laughs> Um, I don't remember girls being particularly impressed by um, my ranking on Elite, but they, you know, they certainly were impressed when you gave them a cool mixtape of a, an album that only just came out. So that was that was a big deal. Right? <laughs> it's a really big deal. Um, and yeah, you had to have a good quality of tape. So if you, my, I, so I had a big advantage on, on some of these things. My dad had a tape machine that had a fader on it, right? So you could fade each song in and out and make it sound really professional. So um, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've no, I, I can't even remember what the girl's name was now, but I do remember having a girlfriend, and I managed to get said girlfriend um, by the quality of my dad's fader. <laughs> That's how shallow she was. <laughs> but it was a big deal at the time. <laughs> oh, and then yeah, printing your own inlays and stuff. Ah, oh, dear, I miss those days sometimes. <laughs> yeah, because you could, you know, you could make a piece of paper, right? And if you were arty, or you knew somebody who was arty, okay, the, pe the piece of paper that went in the cassette was a certain size, right? And you could fold it up yourself. So you could make your own graphics and stick them in um, and make your mixtape look really, really cool. So if you, you know, if you surprised, oh, that, oh, that was that was an anticlimax. We got through to Soto Q without any trouble at all. Um, that's a bit of a shame. Never mind. I was expecting some kind of big pirate action there. Um, anyway, right. So what we should do, because near near the end, um, let's get some fuel. Let's sell our 
Oh, what? What happened there? Um, I want to sell my 35 tons of computers. That's definitely worth doing. Uh, here, we should have made quite a bit of money. Yes, we have. That's good. Um, let's go to, let's do the Thargoid thing, shall we? Because that's what we always do. Um, I will save. I will save. Um, yeah, you got, you, you got brownie points. Be great. So yeah, so that was, that was definitely a thing, right? That was, um, so uh, yeah, to to my complete shame, I have no idea what what her name was <laughs> uh, at all. <laughs> Which is quite. Um, I can vaguely remember what she looked like, but um, and she was she was, a, she was she was a nice girl, you know. But anyway, um, long time ago, right? But it was important. It was that was that was what was motivating us. So I don't know what kids do nowadays, and they do TikTok videos and things like that, right? And, th and that's a cool way to impress people. Um, but back then, mixtapes were a really important thing, okay? <laughs> right, so we need to slot on our hyperspace. Now, in order to get this to work, we have to pause the game. And we have to press F and unpause the game. And then we trigger a misjump, right? So let's deal with some Thargoids. Spotify players? I mean, are those a thing? Maybe I don't know. I have no idea how you impress a girl now. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I impressed a girl um, was a long, long time ago. Um, right, Thargoids. Yay! I mean, to be fair, my wife and I still do listen to our LPs. You know, we'll, we'll take an evening um, and. Um, give me a hard time. They are giving me a hard time. Cool. I haven't even killed one yet. Don't really want to be kidding those. Those are the things I want to pick up at the end. Come on, good grief! I'm not doing too too well here. I am going to die. <laughs> God, I predicted and did it right. Dear, idea. That was a bad one. I'm going to try that. Have I got time to try that? Yes, I've got time to try that again. <laughs> oh, that was a bit mean. Let's try that again. Um, why is a hyperspace two SOTA key? Did I do the wrong? Save. Hang on a minute. It should have been that one. Uh, what's the date today? Yeah, it's that one. Should have been. That one should have been the latest one. Where are we? Okay, we're in on. Oh, we are, oh that's interesting. We arrived. No, that's not right. We've still got 35 tons of computers in the cargo bay. I'm sure I, I definitely saved it, didn't I? That's weird. Oh well, um, that's, I've, I'm confused now, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, that should be the latest save, so what happened there? Uh, Alright, that's the latest save, that one was at, so there's two. Let's try that one, but we're still... Not that's it. That's weird. I could have sworn I saved that. I'm sure I did. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> um, right, let's go to safety gear. <laughs> let's finish that off. We'll stop there. Um, I might have to do that quick run through safety gear again. Anyway, I did the Thargoid thing and died. That was that was that was bad. Embarrassingly bad. Didn't even kill any of them. Sometimes you just get unlucky, right? Sometimes you, it works. Sometimes you don't. So let me get let me get back through safety gear and then we'll, we'll stop at that point with our reminiscing and our. Um, stuff. So yeah, so mixtapes. That was a, that was a cool thing. Um, you know, and the quality of the audio gear you had was a, was, was a big deal too. Um, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a bird lance. Didn't last long, though. Pirate. Let's get rid of that one. Um, yeah, and, it, and, it, and the CDs really didn't come onto the scene until right at the end of the 80s. Um, I don't know quite when the CD came out. I didn't remember, I don't really remember CDs being much of a thing in the 80s, to be honest. But I think the technology was out. Um, I think towards the end, of maybe 86, 87 is when it sort of started getting mainstream. Um, and that's when everybody said, well, that's the end of the LP. And it, it certainly died to death for a while, but it uh, didn't take us long to, well, that's a bit more. A bit more meaty. I think there's three pirates there. And um, 
yeah, CD started changing the things. And then the sort of the mixtape, I mean, at the moment MP3 players came on in, in the 90s, later on in the 90s, obviously, um, that, you know, the tape was gone. I don't know, when was the last time somebody used a cassette in anger? <laughs> I don't know. Um, of course, the other thing about cassettes, because all the software for these 8-bit computers came on cassette, right? So the same problems as copying um, records and copying tapes and copying the radio um, applied to computer software as well. So um, the computer software started um, putting all sorts of things into their, com their games to a couple of crates side by side. Nice little formation there. Not that it makes any difference. Um, and uh, you'd have that's where the lens lock thing came on, right? Um, and the you know when the game starts up, type in you know word six line five on page forty five of the manual <laughs> before the game will start, and all those sort of types of copy protection. So lots of DRM solution as as we would know them today, um, digital rights management sort of stuff, anti anti piracy stuff became a thing, basically to stop all the school kids from copying the software. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was the combined um, combined resources of the software industry against all the school kids throughout the whole of the United Kingdom and we won easily <laughs> well it didn't take us long to uh, figure out ways around everything um, you know there'd be, there'd be a few of us and I was one of them actually um, you know to my to my shame to be honest is you know I was involved in some quite a uh, quite full-scale piracy <laughs> <laughs> because we were the trouble is we were all poor right we didn't yeah you know, i my pocket money in the 80s i kid you not I, my pocket money in the 80s was one pound a week okay uh right save yes good point uh quick save there we go um my my pocket money in the 80s was one pound a week so it would have taken me um to buy elite it would have taken me like three months of saving <laughs> and not spending on anything else um, and most games were like 5.99 um in, in that era um, so it was expensive, right? So I, I you know, <laughs> that's my defence, my lad. <laughs> I had no money, and even though I did a, you know, even did, did paper pa paper rounds, and there we go, Viper's doing that. So I, I started doing paper rounds, and that didn't pay particularly well either, right? And it was a lot of work. It actually was, it was borderline dangerous, actually, particularly when you were young, because those sacks of paper were really, really quite heavy, um, and you know, I was not a particularly beefy kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's the guy at the back who never got picked for sports, right? Um, and um, you know, carrying those paper around that was that was back breaking work for for a pittance, right? It was virtually slavery. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't have much disposable income <laughs> for a long, long time. And and yeah, these games were just completely out of my league. Um, so yeah, the the um, uh, the the uh, the back of the back of the playground um, copying computer games on. <laughs> to see 90 cassettes was a big deal for me and my friends <laughs> um and so um in in homage i mean I, you know as you can see elite i do have a proper box set this i was actually given for christmas in 1985 so it's a very much a prized possession it's the only um apart from a model of the enterprise the uss enterprise from star trek it's the only item i have that i can that i can easily put to mind that i've actually got that i can say yes that was a christmas present in the year the, 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 the 1985 christmas i received that brand new okay so i'm you know you know oh, i'm a reformed pirate okay <laughs> um and um yeah so yeah all that sort of stuff um and i've i've, yeah, I've got a genuine copy of most games and, and today you know i i don't buy don't borrow computer games. Um, uh, you know, I've I've I've, <laughs> I've matured, um, but um, it was it was definitely a thing in the eighties. It was it was definitely a thing, and, and taping from cassettes and, and doing all that sort of stuff. Yeah, good times. But <laughs> so I, I I have to say, um, you know, when people pirate things today, I I tend to be a little bit kind of quiet about things because, um, you know, I did it as a kid, so. I, you know, where's, I have no moral high ground to stand on. <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, people have pirated my books and things like that, right? And I have to be a bit kind of, well, I did that to other artists when, you know, when I was young. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, karma, right? 
uh, it's 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 a bit strange, but never mind, never mind. So yeah, you know, yeah. Hopefully the hopefully the um, hopefully the copyright police won't come down with me too hard for admitting all that. But there we go. <laughs> there was no money. Yeah, we were all poor in the eighties, weren't we? Um, uh, but no. Nah. Anyway, it, but it was it was a great era, right? I look back on it with huge huge fondness. Um, despite the fact we had no money, and the only way to impress girls was with a really really cool mixtape. <laughs> Um, but uh, it was it was it was a good era, and the, the you know the computer games that were playing from that time is good as well. Right. So anyway, so at the end of the session, after all that reminiscing, we have achieved competent. We haven't quite got enough money for a galactic hyperspace unit. Um, so um, and we're now back to being an offender after ripping and hacksawing our way through the universe. Uh, so we've done quite well. Okay, and we're now in. We've we've also travelled a bit. So okay, so we're in the middle of the chart now, um, which is good. So next week, I think we're going to concentrate on getting that galactic hyperspace and see if we can jump into the second galaxy because that competent in the second galaxy with and we'll have to buy another galactic hyperspace we have to have enough money to buy two um i think is a situation where the mission may trigger um okay uh when is shade book two on audible um soon i need to go and push the publish for an exact date all the files should be uh should be going up there so um no, it won't be long for that one. Uh, Shadewood 4 is now available on pre-order. So if you want the book of that, you can get it uh, from Amazon on ebook and paperback. I think the paperback's actually technically out, although it's supposed to be a pre-order, I think. I think it's actually available now. Um, so I'm not quite sure how that's working. But anyway, if you want to grab that, you can. That would be really, really good. Um, and um, yeah, so Shadewood 2 Audible will be very, very soon. And I'm working on recording uh, Shadewood 3 at the moment. So I'm about four fifths of the way through that I think now so that's that's coming soon as well so good stuff coming as well all good stuff um oh the Mastertronic series yeah <laughs> it's great wasn't it 2.99 for a game that was much later on there that was that was that was later um thank you very much for the raid there Karimba um 33 views good to see you all thank you very much for popping in um awesome stuff we're <laughs> literally just wrapping up I'm afraid <laughs> uh, but we've done quite well we've done quite well we are an offender we've been bad we've been bad today um, but we got to competent, okay, so the next stop is dangerous, um, ironically, um, and we're halfway across the galactic chart now, so we've, we've, we've done a bit of travelling as well in our, in our, in our slides and cross, um, destruction across the universe, so all good stuff. Master Tronic was 199, yes, that's what I do remember that, that was, that was a bit later on, was that sort of 86, 87-ish? Um, I know I went to university in 88, so I think at that point I, my spectrum ended up in the attic and... <laughs> <laughs> That's when it started. Uh, How goes the original Elite? Yeah, so we're good, yes. We, we're uh, Just to recap on that, we have got a good ship. Um, we've got a bit of money. Um, we're now competent, so we're quite a long way up. It's not harmless, mostly harmless, poor. Average, above average, competent dangerous deadly elite i think that's how it goes so we're competent now so we're, we're moving on up we're moving on up we're not doing too badly but uh, we haven't triggered any missions yet we the plan is to buy a galactic hyperspace drive go into galaxy 2 buy another galactic hyperspace drive um and i understand that a mission can trigger under those conditions so that's that's the working theory at the moment. So the aim of this playthrough is to get the Spectrum missions to trigger so we can capture them for the first time on on, on video. That's the plan, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, my friends, um, thank you very much for your company today. That's hope been fun. Um, and love, <laughs> loving the reminiscing about mixtapes. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and uh, we, will, we will crack on next week, onwards and upwards. So um, uh, thank you very much for your company. Been good, um, and I will see you all next week. Uh, Raidley says hi Drew, hello, good to see you, thank you very much, um, Boog911 just described as well, so thank you very much as well. Um, links to my books on Amazon, um, If literally if you go to Amazon, whichever Amazon is closer to you, type in Drew Wager, that's the easiest way, um, the links are really weird on Amazon, but just, just type in Drew Wager, you will find me, so um, it, it'll all be there. <laughs> Have a great weekend folks, take it easy, be good. Stay safe from the virus, wash your hands, etc, etc, etc. And I will see you back on Monday for my creative stream, Thursday's Elite Dangerous Law, with um, with special guest Dave Seslin Hughes, who's going to be talking to me about Lave and all that kind of good stuff. Um, Friday I do pretend play a bit of Stellaris, and of course back on Saturday for more of this Elite playthrough, see if we can trigger that mission, so we're getting close. Thank you very much, guys. Be good. See you soon. <laughs>